What you're about to hear is the real story behind the wage-free scheme of the McGuinty government here in Ontario, Canada. Public services in this province are already too lean, but the government has decided that tax breaks for corporate CEOs are more important than children with mental illnesses getting the treatment they need or people having enough to eat or a roof over their head. Working people need to know the real story, and that's what you're about to hear. On March 25th, 2010, the Ontario government brought in something called the wage freeze policy. Uh, the government is saying that for non-union workers, um, they are going to be legislated. In fact, they've already been legislated so that they cannot receive a pay raise between March 25th, 2010 and the end of March 2012. In the case of unionized workers, what's happening is the government says it won't tear up collective agreements. Instead, what it's going to do is wait until those collective agreements come due. And when they negotiate the new ones, they will negotiate uh, two years of zeros. First on the issue of the uh, freeze itself. I'm going to show a little chart here. Now the blue bars represent uh, what your wages would be like if you got wage increases that were equal to inflation. Now the red bar is a little bit different. A person making $50,000 a year is going to lose 2% of their pay to the wage freeze in the first year. The next year, they're not starting from $50,000. They're losing 2% down from the forty nine. dollars So in other words, they're losing 4% in the second year. Now what's interesting on this chart, of course, is what happens in the third year. Let's assume that their wages go up by the value of inflation in the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth year. If that happens, you see that the worker in question is still losing that $2,000 a year every year. And that's what I mean when I say that it's not a two-year effect. It is an effect that goes on and on and on. So uh, if you're making $50,000 a year, you lost $1,000 in the first year, you lost $2,000 in the second year, you lost two, two, two in the third, fourth, and fifth years. By the time you've gone through five years, you've lost $9,000. In this chart, you see four different graphs, and the, the third one is the one that the Ontario government showed to all the unions when it was trying to get them to go along with the idea of the wage freeze. And it shows 2004 to 2009. And the third one there, you see the green bar is the highest. That's the Ontario public sector wage increases. The Ontario private sector, the blue bar, is not as high as that, but they're both above inflation, which is the pink bar. So this is what the government is going around saying. Look at these last six years. Um, everything has gotten better uh, for the public sector, not so much for the private sector. This is where we get into uh, the old English expression that figures lie and liars figure. <laughs> Yeah, it is true that public employees have been doing better in that little period. But now let's go back a little bit. And if you look at the first chart here, it shows 1991 to 95. And the green bar, which is the public employees, is way behind the blue bar. And in fact, the green bar is below inflation as well. And then you look at this period from 1996 to 2003, and you see the green bar is way behind the private sector, and it's below inflation as well. So there's a 12-year period there where... Um, uh, wage increases for the public sector, the provincial public sector in Ontario, were below inflation. Our wages dove down through the 90s and slowly made their way back up, and yet your wages were exactly the same in 2008 as they were in 1992. So this notion that the public sector has somehow outstripped the private sector is just, uh, what's the word, not true. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this little chart shows how much the wage freeze is going to save the government. Once you get to the five-year mark, it's going to be $1.835 billion a year that the government is saving. What's also going on at the same time as the wage freeze is a major phase-in of a huge uh, tax break for corporations. And what we're actually seeing is that by the time it's fully phased in, the value of the money that's being lost to uh, the government is about $2.4 billion. We are talking about a very, very smooth transfer of money from the pockets of public employees into the profits of private sector uh, companies, and not just any private sector companies, but the biggest, most successful corporations in, in Canada. And you're pouring money into this bucket. Well, the thing about this bucket is there's a hole in the bucket, and underneath the bucket there's a trough, and in the trough you will find the snouts of every CEO of every major corporation <laughs> in this country. So for the big six banks in Canada last year, they paid out $8 billion in bonuses. 
This is before they paid out the $14 billion in profits that they made. They're getting employees who don't even work for them to pay for an increase in profits, which I think is quite interesting, actually. And you have to say to them, well, that's slick. That is just slick. There's no other word for it. The first thing you need to know about corporate tax cuts is that in Ontario, between the federal level and the provincial level, we've been doing them for about 10 years. So because we've been doing these corporate income tax cuts, we should have seen a great increase in uh, the amount of investment that's going on, the amount of job creation that's going on. This chart shows the corporate tax rates are going down and investment is going down at the same time. It uh, really um, is a case that the government hasn't proved that more tax cuts will actually cause more investment to happen because right now exactly the opposite thing's been going on. Uh, this next chart uh, has to do with uh, uh, something from the federal budget. The government uh, calculated how much economic bang for their buck they would get from each expenditure that they might do. So if you look at this chart, you can see that uh, measures for low-income households and the unemployed for every dollar you spend you get a dollar seventy back infrastructure investment me measures for every dollar you spend you get a dollar sixty back housing investment for every dollar you spend you get a dollar fifty other spending measures which basically means public services you get a dollar forty and corporate income tax measures when you pay a dollar you only get thirty cents in economic activity back it's not hard to figure out why that is. The person who is unemployed or has a low income, when they get money, they spend it. Whereas with corporations, if they get money, they might not have an investment opportunity that they're waiting for, so they could pay down their debt, or they could save the money, or they could um, uh, invest it in another country, which doesn't do anything for Ontario. But the absolute best expenditures we could do would be to put money in the pockets of people who don't have a lot of money, invest in public services, and invest in infrastructure in Ontario, because that's what really builds the economy. The KPMG consulting firm did a big study of 10 countries and talked about their tax rates. It's 2010 Competitive Alternatives, it's called. Canada had the second lowest total tax index, they called it, because if you take a look at Germany, which is actually number seventh from the bottom, they have much higher taxes than we do. Just up until this year, they were the number one exporter in the world. So this notion that uh, our taxes are too high to attract investment is simply, uh, once again, I'm searching for the word, wrong. <laughs> um, what they're really talking about is do you have the infrastructure that goes with a modern economy because if you do then you're going to have a modern economy and if you don't you're going to have dirt roads and you know, walking to the well to get water sort of thing it would be a much better policy just to leave that money in the pockets of working people in ontario and have them spend it in their communities so if you look at what people told a thousand ontarians told angus reed this summer 76% agree that existing corporate income tax cuts should be postponed. 81% of Ontarians support higher taxes on corporations if that money is used to pay down the deficit. 75% say CEOs should make sacrifices to pay down the deficit. And 75% support a 10% surtax on those earning $300,000 a year or more. So if we did have the money from those high income earners, those uh, high income corporations, we could then reinvest it back in our own economy and keep the money circulating. We uh, are facing a policy that is uh, blatantly unfair. We're one year from the election and politicians need to know that we do not support this. So what we're certainly saying to our members is uh, you don't have to take this. Uh, we have a new we uh, website at www.stopthewagefreeze.ca. You can go there and get more information. You can calculate how much money you and your family will lose because of the wage freeze. You can send an email to your MPP from that website saying that you don't like this policy and you want to see it changed. You can also talk to your steward. You can talk to your local president. You can talk to your executive board member in your area to find out other activities that we'll be doing uh, to fight this very, very unfair policy. Together, OPSU members can effectively expose the folly of using our wages to fund billion-dollar tax giveaways for profitable corporations operating in Ontario. And we can work with our progressive allies to hold the government accountable to fund critical public services. And that's what OPSU is all about.